Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me, Bill. And this time we're going to look at a component which uh, I'd actually forgotten about in the mists of time. Um, it's a component that used to occur in uh, electronics magazines that I used to look at back in the 70s and, and the 80s. And uh, I'd completely forgotten about it until I got hold of the 75 in 1 science fair kit and spotted that was one in there. And the article in question is the SCR or silicon controlled rectifier uh, something you just don't seem to come across anymore I guess replaced by either triax and possibly in some applications MOSFETs um, so let's start by having a look at exactly what a silicon controlled rectifier actually is the SCR then um, long forgotten device essentially is a, a diode with a third connection called the gate. Now ordinarily when um, at first in the circuit the SCR doesn't conduct in either direction it's not until you apply a positive voltage to the gate that uh, it starts to conduct and when it does it conducts in the essential uh, uh, diode sense of the word i.e. in one direction and it stays that way uh, until you um, take away uh, that, that uh, current flow across the SCR. So in other words, it's an electronic switch which latches on until the, until the current flow is switched off. Now the SCR which got me thinking about this was the one in the science fair kit. There's a picture of it there. That's a relatively um, small device and I didn't want to do any damage to it. So I decided to get out something a little more substantial. So we've got a C106 which I think is about 400 volts and up to about 4 amps. Anyway, I'm not going to get anywhere near that, but uh, you get the general idea. So inside it, we've got three junctions. Um, we've got two P's, two N's, but we've got three junctions. Um, we've got anode, cathode and gate. And nothing happens between anode and cathode until you apply a positive voltage to the gate. And when you do, it switches on. And as I said earlier, it stays on until the current is taken away. OK, let's, um, let's uh, test it out, and to do that I propose to use the following circuit. Uh, very straightforward, I've got an LED with a current limiting resistor uh, in series with the SCR, and when I press the right hand side push button switch it applies a positive going voltage to the gate, which should switch the SCR on and the LED should light. And it should stay that way whether the button is pressed or not. Now I don't have a normally closed push button switch they're all normally opens I'm afraid so to allow me to switch it off without pulling wires out I've also put a second push button switch across the SCR and if I momentarily press that it effectively takes the SCR out of circuit and that's the same effect as uh, as depriving it of, um, of current so it just switches it off so um, that allows me to uh, to demonstrate the, the latching operation. That's the theory anyway. OK, let's go and have a look at that on the bench. Here's the SCR circuit then on the breadboard. So we've got the push button here on the right, which applies some voltage to the gate of the SCR. That's the SCR there. And then this button here essentially bypasses it to allow me to momentarily take it out of circuit so we can see the latch in action. So I've got 5 volt DC supply coming in on the left top left so I'm going to just press the button and not surprisingly we see the LED is now lit um, and that's uh, working at no problem and as you can see I've taken my finger away from the button almost immediately and the light still um, stayed on. So just to repeat that a little more slowly press the button, light comes on Stop pressing the button, so there's no longer any power going to the gate, uh, but the SCR has been triggered and latched and is now on until uh, we break the circuit. So we could, for instance, pull the power supply out, push it back in, that has exactly the same effect as my other push button switch there, and a momentary press on there re triggers it off like that. So that's the, the latching example. Now that's um, using DC. Uh, now I've got the ability here to uh, supply AC, so we'll just um, put the AC supply on. So I'm now supplying AC. Here's a, a little um, screen grab of the scope, and we've got uh, roughly 5 volts RMS 
AC going in at about 50 Hz. It's just coming from the signal generator. And um, so as we can see, if I press the button, the LED lights. Um, it's not as bright as the DC one, but uh, I'll come back to why that is in a minute. If I take my finger away, it immediately goes off. And I'm sure you've already spotted, or you perhaps knew it in the first place, that because it's AC, obviously the um, voltage reverses polarity effectively 50 times a second. So although it's on when you've got the gate current on, when you turn it off, uh, next half cycle it uh, effectively uh, switches off. And while it's on, if you probe what's going on with the circuit, you can see straight away that we've got effectively what amounts to half wave rectification. Um, so there's uh, you know less than 50% of the power going into the LED that there would have been uh, with a DC um, source. Now rectification is occurring in the SCR, it would also occur in the LED, I do accept that. Uh, but that's one of the reasons the LED appears uh, less bright because of that. So that's, um, that's AC. Now if I take away uh, the AC supply again, and uh, we'll bring back the DC, and we'll just confirm we've got DC operation, so it goes on and latches, and that takes it off. Now here, I've got a triac. Um, whoa, super modern technology, and purely by chance, uh, the two um, main connections of the triac are pins 1 and 2, and the gate is pin 3. That's pretty much the same as the SCR, so if I just quickly replace the SCR with the triac, um, which is a very handy little um, feature to allow me to demonstrate this, uh, when I press the button, uh, on comes the power. And just like it was having an AC supply, because the tr because a triac is bidirectional, when you take away the gate current, it switches off. And there's something else you can do with the triac, which I'm sure you're very aware of, uh, is if you um, vary the voltage going to the gate you can affect the brightness. So I've got a little pot here and I'm just going to um, connect that up um, like so. So that's got a supply now going to the uh, the pot and if I slowly rotate the pot you're hopefully going to see if it's going to work for me. There we go. That the LED's brightness can be varied now. It's a bit, a bit. Um, the pots are quite a high value, so you're getting not, not. Uh, you don't get very much control, so to speak. But um, that's the way your uh, triac light dimmer works, and that would work for uh, for AC or for DC. Um, so if we take away the DC supply and put the uh, AC supply back on again, like so. I'm hopeful that should work just the same. Yep, there you go. In fact, arguably works better on AC. Get a bit, little bit more control of the dimming. So there we go. Um, that's the uh, SCR. That's the little beauty there. Um, and we just want to show you the difference in operation between that and a triac. Okay, so uh, let's uh, look at. Uh, the kind of thing that uh, was done with SCRs uh, back in the 70s. And here's a circuit taken from Everyday Electronics, February 1977. Um, and the circuit in question is the, the, the wiper delay. Now, whilst this might seem bizarre now, um, if you're as ancient as me, you're old enough to remember when not all cars had intermittent wiper. Uh, in fact, the first intermittent wipers, there was just one speed. These days, of course, you get uh, a confusing array of settings. I have a car now which has an automatic wipers. It does work pretty well, actually. Unthinkable, back in the 70s. So what we've got here is something which could hardly be more retro. We've got an SCR and we've got a unijunction transistor. Um, what about that, eh? I just think this is such a lovely uh, example of... Uh, of retro electronics and it's really uh, quite clever because um, if you think about the way your wipers work uh, when they when the windscreen wiper moves back to the parked position at the bottom or the top of the screen wherever it is 
um, there's a, a switch somewhere in there which uh, switches the motor out of circuit and uh, obviously that allows the, the wipers to park if you switch them off and if you've left them switched on that, that park switch is bypassed. So that uh, uh, facility is made use of here because uh, once the wipers have done a cycle um, the motor effectively switches itself off and uh, also turns off the SCR so we stop the latching action. And the reason we've got a unijunction transistor there we've got a capacitor C1 being charged up through the two resistors one of which is variable and if you've watched uh, my video on unijunction transistors a few a um, few videos back, I think it's last year now, um, you may recall that the two traces on base 1 and base 2 of a unijunction transistor look a bit like that. That's just um, a screen grab from the scope um, from that, that video. And you can see on the, on the purple trace at the bottom we get a positive going pulse. It's very brief, but it's more than enough to, to trigger the SCR into conduction. Um, so that's what's going on and obviously uh, capacitor of 100 microfarads will have a, a relatively long uh, charge discharge as uh, well charge cycle uh, unijunctions tend to charge and then discharge very quickly so uh, that's the circuit and wow um, good eh? now I don't have um, something that would simulate um, uh, windscreen wipers I'm afraid so I've not actually built the circuit but I've no doubt it uh, it would work um, rather well and uh, it's just a nice little reminder that um, intermittent wiper feature on cars wasn't something that all of us uh, could enjoy uh, back in the past um, things are more complicated now okay well there you have silicon controlled rectifiers hope you've uh, enjoyed uh, looking at that uh, retro component and I was particularly pleased to find an example that used a unijunction transistor uh, I can't think of a way of getting more 70s than that with uh, that windscreen wiper controller um, it amused me anyway and this is the first video I've produced using uh, a computer running the Linux operating system um, Microsoft decided my computer wasn't supportable anymore so they can go and stick it where they want to I'll go elsewhere a bit of a learning curve but I've enjoyed it and hopefully um, uh, it hasn't made any difference to the video quality thanks very much for watching look forward to seeing you on the next video